Welcome back to the tutorial series on how to put your Star Wars World Republic character into Battlefront 2. And in the last one, we rigged the model finally to the Battlefront 2 skeleton. And in this one, we're going to do his textures. So I've got my model right here. What we're going to need to do is we're going to need to get this guy into Substance Painter. And if you don't have Substance Painter, do not worry. It is free with a student license. And all you have to do is just go to Substance Painter. Google it, whatever, get it, and then, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty simple. Uh, I'm just going to assume that you know how to do that. So, we have this, we're going to merge both of these things, and we're going to make sure it's only using one material. And then we can go ahead and export this as Baku Subs, that's Substance. And we're going to do Scale 1. Alright, so now I just need to open up Substance Painter. Okay, so when you get the Substance Painter, it should look something like this. You're going to go to File, New, and we're going to select our mesh. So we're going to go to the Onslaught Skin and select the Subs one. Now we want, you could do 4K textures. I'm going to do 2K textures because that saves a lot of file space and uh, frankly it's not noticeable at 4K. So we're just going to go with that and let's get it to load up here. Perfect. So you can move around in Substance Painter if you don't know by pressing Alt and your third mouse button and your first mouse button, first mouse button, and then those two kind of things are how you move around. Uh, if you, I would, I would recommend going and watching a tutorial on Substance Painter if you've never used it before, because this is the best way to make the textures for Battlefront 2 models, in my opinion. So we're going to go ahead and import two textures, which is going to be our body color and our body normal. So let's go ahead and import those. We're going to set them as textures. And we're going to import them into the current session. All right, let's go ahead and delete the layer and add a fill layer. So our base color is going to be this right here. We're going to set our roughness all the way to 1 because we will mess with that in later layers. And then our normal is this technically, right? But not really. It's not actually a normal. It's a height because that's the only thing we can actually use it for. I'm not entirely sure what this normal is, but I'm what I do is I usually set it as a height. So I'm going to do height, but it is a little extreme. Uh, so I'll also set it as a black mask, and then paint over it with like 50% opacity or something, because that is the way to go. Don't know if this is the best way to do it. It's just the way I do it, right? And boom, it's got a little bit of height now. And as you can see, boom. Boom, boom. That's all the height detail that we've added mesh already. But it's not quite done yet because we need to add all the smoothness and metalness to it as well. So my character uses a lot of cloth and a little bit of metal in his shoulder pads and his helmets. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to materials. I've created a new uh, paint layer here. I'm going to set this alignment to UV. And I'm going to pick Fabric Suit, because I like Fabric Suit. And we're going to do Roughness and Metal. And I'm going to just kind of paint on the roughness. Ooh, that's, that's a very high number. I'm just going to paint on the roughness, which is also the smoothness, in other words. And I'm just going to paint it onto the gloves. And just kind of everywhere on the model that is supposed to be fabric, I'm just going to paint with fabric. I don't really know if you can tell because it is such a minimal change and YouTube compression is kind of a thing. So, But if you do turn off this layer and turn it back on again, you can see it get a little bit brighter and a little bit darker on my screen. So I'm going to take, let's say, Iron Roughness, and we're going to do this, the Roughness and Metallic of Iron. And then we're just going to kind of paint it over my helmet here. I did to here. Looks a lot better already. Go ahead and put it on the rest of the helmet. And there's not much else to it. You just kind of go around painting all over the mesh to give it smoothness and metalness until it looks pretty good. Alright, so a few problems in the bake that we're going to have to cover up in the AOSL texture, but that's okay. We can live with that. Now the helmet, I think, is a little bit, like, too much, you know? 
Like I feel I feel like the metalness is a little bit too high. So I'm gonna erase. Oh gosh. I need to set that back to UV. So I'm gonna erase all of that. And then I'm just gonna try again. We'll just do those and I'm gonna do the opacity this time lower, like 50%. The visor in here should be a little bit more smooth, like a little bit more uh, shiny, if you will. So I'm actually 100%, please. Thank you very much. And so I'm actually just going to make it a little shinier. going to give it the shininess of uh, nickel pure, because that's a very shiny metal. Much improved, I think. All right, one more thing I want to try to do before we end this off. And actually, the backpack's kind of trash. <laughs> I don't really like how metal that is. There we go. That looks a little bit better to me. All right, one more thing I want to try is to improve the texture quality. I have a... I use this uh, enhancing website, letsenhance.io, and you can actually select an image, and it will kind of enhance it for you. So I'm going to try that. And you see this is a 2048 by 10, 1024. And if you have digital art, I think you could do it up to eight times or four times. I've seen it. So it's just going to improve the quality a little bit. And I just want to see if it works. There we go. And it's this one right here. So let's go back to the fill layer. And plop that down instead of the other one. How much did that improve things? Probably not really at all. But there you go. Barely noticeable. So we can actually see the textures in a little bit of different ways with these environments. So like if we put it here, you can see how it looks in different lighting, which I think looks really cool there. It looks really cool there. And oh, yep. If it looks good in a lot of them, then we're pretty much good to go. We'll line the front. Whatever that one is. I like Studio 3, honestly, the most, but <laughs> take your preference. That looks good to me. So let's go ahead and export these textures. So we just go to File, Export Textures, and you have to set up an output template. And I already have this for a lot of different kind of Battlefront 2 textures. Feel free to copy this output map. It's a color coded thing if you want to pause the video and look. Uh, but we're only going to need a couple of these textures for this, and those textures are, let's go ahead and start to export. You need to select an output directory. Boba Fett only uses CS, NM, and AOSL. So we're only going to use the AO, because we have to build the AOSL in Photoshop. I'm going to hit export. All right, and then we're going to go into Photoshop. We're going to open up that AO. We're going to go into Channels, Green, Edit, Fill, Color. And we want the color to be the BD, 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 BD. That's a gray color, right? We want it to be that. And then this is your AOSL. However, there are a few things wrong with the AO. Well, there's only one thing I really noticed, which was this part of his leg. So where is that on the texture map? I'm not exactly certain. We can find it pretty easily if we just do that. Right? There it is. It's right here. Okay, so we need to cover that up with yellow. This spot right here. So we're just gonna do something like this. Save this as AOSL. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is just look in Blender, how it would look in Battlefront. And I'm going to append a set of materials, which is something else you can find inside of the Battlefront modding help server. Let's go ahead and open all that up. And okay, so we've appended all that. So now we can go into shading and just kind of set up our textures. I'm going to delete that. Add group. Battlefront 2 Basic, Shader. All right, so we need a few things. We're going to need three image texture inputs. And 
we're going to need two converters that separate RGB. All right, first one is a CS. So we're going to open that up. CS means color and smoothness. There we go. We want to do it with these uh these special ones here, the ones that we have uh kind of uh improved the quality of the model instead of the one that was merged. We want to do it with this one. So we're going to go ahead and do CS. That is the base color and the alpha is the smoothness. We want to do the normal, the NM, which is going to be color in the image, normal X and R, normal Y and G, metalness and B. We want to make sure that is set to non-color. And then the AOSL right here. And we just need the R in the AL section. And there we go. That is how our textures will look in Battlefront 2. Ooh. <laughs> Such a massive improvement, right? That is going to look really, really cool in-game, and I can't wait to play it. So, oh, there's actually a few more issues we can notice. Right there. Fix. And there we go. So, in the next part, we're going to go ahead and import all of this into Battlefront, and we're finally going to open up Battlefront and see our Star Wars The Old Republic character in the game.